myself Dr. Nilu Johan. I am associate professor at the Department of Pure and Applied Chemistry, University of Kota. And here I am going to present a topic that is application of diffuse reflectance UV visible spectroscopy in material analysis. And this is the light spectra which is uh, when we disperse a light or when we pass a white light through a prism, it disperses into several range of light. Basically, we divide it into three parts. The first one that is IR uh, that uh, from 800 to 1100 nanometers. Then the visible light that is from 620 yeah, or we can say uh, it is started from 780 to 400 nanometers range and it contains seven colors with gears and then uh, the lowest part of uh, that is spectrum is 200 to 400 nanometers. What happened during that UV visible spectrum uh, analysis? Basically a light comes from source that absorbs from the sample material and then some light get reflected. This is a, a basic uh, uh, analysis diagram of spectrophotometer in which analyzer of light that transmitted through a sample and records the wavelength at which observation occurs along the degree of observation in which lights coming from light source and passing through monochromator going to sample cell compartment, then the transmitted part of the light is detected through a detector and then the signals came out in a form of spectrum. That is a whole uh, working of UV visible spectrophotometer. The spectrum coming from spectrophotometer can be classified into two forms, one that is absorption. Uh, when the light comes from source, passes through the absorbent medi medium and the resultant white light examined through a spectrophotometer, the process is known as absorption spectrum. Then the second kind of spectrum is emission spectrum in which the light emitted, directly emitted from the uh, enlightened source examined through a spectrophotometer that is just like uh, light come from uh, sun and it is detected from some spectrophotometer and these spectrums are of two kind one continuous that is uh, shown here in a form of white uh, graph and second one the discontinuous graph that is in a form of line spectrum and this is a basic principle uh, which is uh, used in a spectrophotometer where the incident light I0 passes through a medium, homogeneous medium and come out some and some part of light came out after passing through the medium that part of light yeah, intensity of light we can calculate in form of transmittance that is I upon I0, I0 the initial incident intensity of the light and I the transmitted intensity of the light and uh, this is the equation from which we can calculate the absorbance because uh, we have to calculate the absorbent part of light and we are going to calculate it in form of absorbance and here the ratio logarithm of I upon I0 that is a form of absorbance and it is proportional to the concentration of the, uh, of the solution from which the light is passing through and second the length which is considered here uh, as a light path. So in combination of these two uh, variables the concentration and light length uh, the law is coming as in a form of Lambert Beer's law and it is here absorbance is equal to the molar 
uh, Neptune excitation coefficient, concentration and x. It is a product of these three things. And one more uh, form of Lambert Beard law is there. We can calculate that uh, Lambert Beard's law in form of transmittance also, where uh, absorbance is equal to minus log 10 of T the transmittance and uh, the sum of absorbance and transmittance is equal to 1. How light interact with sample here? When incident light came to the sample, it can scatter, it can transmit it, it can be absorbed or it can be reflected. So, there are four processes in which light have to be going through. We extract observation properties from transmitted light. Can we calculate the observation properties from transmitted light? Yes, partially yes. And how to deal with this reflected and scattering part of light? That is a one portion which is reflected through the qubit, solvent or the material particles present in solvent. So, how can we calculate the accurate portion of transmitted light? Here, we can first we have to put simple qubit with a solvent, then we have to put in same condition the qubit with the required solution with the same solvent. Then we can subtract the absorbance, uh, the reflectance part of qubit and medium uh, through that diagram and we can directly get the transmitted light uh, of light portion of the required sample. What is the limitation? These are few limitations of U visible transmittance spectroscopy. The analysis made for dilution only, dilution uh, usually not suitable for uh, experiment at high temperature and very reactive gases. So, we can't analyze solid and colloidal samples through this experimental technique. It can show deviation when monochromator light is not used, deviation when colored solution ionized, dissociate, associate or polymerize in solution. It can deviate in presence of impurities due to fluorescence and observation of impurities present in solvent. So, we have to improve that technology for uh, just like a that just like given in a slide. It is difficult to survive in this techno year without updating our knowledge. This is uh, diffuse reflection uh, of uh, sample slide. Here, the crystals in a powder is lightly diffused. This slides uh, tell us what we need. Basically, uh, the first slide in which we are using directly uh, sample, we can be we are using for sample and uh, so solution and gases samples, but for solid cases it is not used. So, that is why second technique we are going to use in which white refer reference samples we are going to use with sample of analysis. Then we have to subtract that, that reference materials observance and then we can finally get the samples analysis. Here the scattered light is negligible in mole molecular dispersed media. Scattering is considered for colloidal or solid materials when the wavelength is in order of magnitudes of particle size. Scattering can be reduced by embedding particles in media with similar refracting index. In this case, we can use barium sulphate or magnesium oxide as a refractive index materials. And these are few applications which is related to our day to day life like uh, we can uh, we can determine the perfect shade or brilliance of the shade of white paint. The color of the piece of limestone or marble, we can check it very easily. The color difference encountered between the shades of paints, paper, fabric and cloth, we can determine with this technique. UV cover, shade protection factors of shaded clothes, we can easily determine this. And uh, one more important technique we can use here uh, in uh, luminescence trans transmittance of lenses of sunglasses or sun glare filters uh, changing. We can determine uh, the, the ratio of hemoglobin and melamide that uh, 
leads to distract the human skin. So, we can check the ratio and we can determine uh, the disease behind it. The effectiveness of the anti reflectant lens coating we can determine by this technique, and uh, the concentration of dyes in fabric we can calculate in a uh, fabric form also. So, thank you for kind attention.